anybody know who the largest employer in Silicon Valley was for the first 20 years in the history of the Valley? Any idea? Lockheed. Lockheed. Anybody know what Lockheed made in the 50s and 60s? Submarine launched ballistic missiles. Silicon Valley in the 50s and 60s was one of the largest weapon manufacturing centers in the United States. We had an assembly line making Polaris, Poseidon, and Trident submarine launch ballistic missiles. Not only Lockheed, but a company called Westinghouse wasn't making refrigerators, they were making the launch tubes. Um, and, by the way, anybody ever been to Bonnie Dune in the Santa Cruz Mountains? Yeah. yeah? That's where they tested the missiles. Um, now, that would be good enough. By the way, Lockheed went from zero employees in 1956 to 25,000 in 1960. Zero to 25,000. You might put Google, Facebook, and all those to shame. But even better, anybody know where East Palo Alto is? Yeah. In East Palo Alto, Lockheed had a different facility. It's where they were secretly making spy satellites on Willow Road. Lockheed made all the Corona, Gambit, and Hexagon imaging satellites, and then some of their interesting follow-ons on the old Hiller uh, aircraft uh, manufacturing plant on Willow Road. And so Silicon Valley in the 50s and 60s, while the semiconductor business was emerging, was also the center of Cold War weapons manufacturers. The other piece, and then I'll just stop, is in the 50s and 60s, Stanford, in the middle of the engineering school, had a 400-person secret weapons lab. Three quarters of all the graduate theses were classified by 1965, <laughs> uh, just to give you a scale of the business you were in. And at the same time, we were doing all this black stuff, meaning secret stuff, we were beginning to create a commercial industry as well. 1956 is also the year that William Shockley sets up the first semiconductor plant in Mountain View. And then after that, 18 months later, Fairchild Semiconductor starts, and 65 semiconductor companies spin out <coughs> of Fairchild in the next 20 years. And that's how we became Silicon Valley. But it was all an accident. There really was no, and if you want to see this, there's a video called The Secret History of Silicon Valley on YouTube. Um, kind of interesting to understand the place that you all kind of thought, Gee, we just do web browsers here. I don't know. We do, we do iOS apps, you know. Right? Right? Um, and so that, that was a long soliloquy that my first company was in the deep black world. And by the way, the interesting thing is the government, when they, want to, when they still want to solve a technical problem, actually does it quite well because they could throw infinite cash on a technical solution. And so while I was doing that, I had housemates. I rented a house in Palo Alto off of University Avenue doing the whole, you know, have a house with a bunch of housemates who were working with these stupid little things called microprocessors. I mean, they were just silly. I mean, there was the Intel 4004. I had to laugh. You know, we had roofballs of stuff you wouldn't imagine. These guys were rah, rah, rah. But they were doing, like, stuff they wanted to do. And they were masters of their own fate. Well, I was working on projects that had spacecraft and semiconductor fabs and, you know, whatever. And these guys were, look, I could connect the audio speaker to this. Isn't this cool? And I'm going... You know, we had things in space that you would rather, oh, look, it can make a noise. <laughs> but I actually thought their stuff was a lot cooler. And so finally, I, I was kind of torn between actually making my career the black world or trying to get into some of this innovative stuff where you were masters of your own fate. And about, I finally made the choice. I joined a startup semiconductor company called Zyloc, which made the Z80 and then the Z8000 microprocessors. And I was uh, first the head of training and education at Top Microprocessor Design. Um, you never wanted to be in a system I was teaching you about a design, but that was what I did. And then eventually I became a product marketeer. I knew so much about the products that uh, somebody said, perhaps you ought to help us write the data sheets than just teach the customers. And that was my first move into marketing was for a semiconductor startup. How, how long did it take for that industry, the whole, you know, with the weapons and uh, with, uh, with Lockheed? How, how long did it take for that to go away? Because it was it. Did it phase out slowly? Did it, was it here, you know, did it explode one day and it's gone the next day? Or? What makes you think it's gone? <laughs> <laughs> so anybody know about Palantir, who's the most visible black yeah. company? Yeah. Um, you know, Palantir is uh, uh, just a great example of, you know, we no longer make massive weapon systems because we can't afford them anymore, but uh, we do a lot of cyber stuff and we do a lot of uh, bits. Uh, the CIA and NSA have their own uh, uh, venture capital firm called InQtel. Um, any of you doing some of your interest in the government should probably get some funding from them. Um, and, and so uh, I, I call this uh, hidden in plain sight. Uh, you might not know what these companies do, and if you don't need to know, then you don't know. Um, but the Valley has always been great at that. And uh, uh, 
Um, so yeah, they're still here. They just aren't making ICBMs, and um, and the large projects are uh, probably in a place where you won't see them. I always thought Palantir was doing Facebook apps. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> I went in there one time. They, they have your name. <laughs> um, That's what, why I tape over my camera on my iMac. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> think, think about it. Think about it. No one would ever want to. 